Tonight on West Dakota, Fox News at 9, a deadly courtroom shooting caught on camera. Plus, the future of medical marijuana in our state. But first, a North Dakota-grown banking bill is about to cross the finish line in Washington. This is West Dakota Fox News at 9 with Molly Martinez and meteorologist Henry Blakes. Your first news of the night starts right now on West Dakota Fox News at 9. Good evening, I'm Molly Martinez. This week, lawmakers are slated to pass a bill that aims to give small Main Street banks and credit unions a competitive edge. They're doing that by rolling back Dodd-Frank regulations that were put in place after the financial collapse a decade ago. It will be the first bipartisan bill of the year, and one of its architects is Senator Heidi Heitkamp. She says North Dakota in particular will be a winner when it passes. But with so many other pressing issues in the national spotlight right now, like gun control or immigration, some are asking why this bill and why now? This bill being the first nonpartisan or bipartisan bill to move forward, because we have a number of Democratic senators dominantly in red-leaning rural states that are on board for this, um, it's because they can actually get it done. I mean, a lot of the bigger things that are on the national scale are so partisan focused that getting anything accomplished on them um, is a long shot. That was uh, Jeanette Larson, a political scientist at Minot State University. Not everyone is banking on this bill. Democratic Senator Elizabeth Warren has dubbed this the Bank Lobbyist Act and says it's a slippery slope to another possible financial crisis. We'll have a lot more coverage on what's in this bill and what it means for you coming up tomorrow. This week also marks the official kickoff of political season. The state Democratic Convention starts on Thursday in Grand Forks. Bo Evans, Andrew Horn, and I will be bringing you live coverage of the event all week. You can watch it here on Fox and on our sister station, KFYR-TV. Our other top story tonight. Seven years after a devastating flood in Minot, today crews are mobilizing to break ground on a billion-dollar flood protection project. Megan Von Baron has more. The 2011 flood displaced hundreds of Minot residents along with businesses. Reed Argent, who lost his home in the flood, says he's happy to see the project coming to fruition. We had about nine and a half feet of water in our house, and so of course it you know, affected our house, basically destroyed it. Over the course of a year, rebuilt and moved back because we love the neighborhood and, and love where we live. Some of the tree removal and stuff on phase two will start next week. Uh, the, both contractors have been mobilizing in equipment. Um, they'll all run concurrently by the end of 2020, December 2020. Uh, all three projects should be complete. Jonathan says this is just the beginning. In Minot, it's just the first three of about 14 different phases that need to happen. But aside from that, there's a lot of other things that are going on. So we're, we're trying to continue and keep the, the basin-wide outlook on this, you know, and make sure that everyone is looked at and everybody's concerns are, are addressed for the flood protection. Jonathan says with the billion-dollar price tag on the project, Funding is crucial. For now, Argent says the first three phases will put the city at ease. No matter what, how much snow we have, how much water comes through Minot, that our, that our homes are going to be protected. So I think one of the biggest things is just going to be to put people at ease again and not have to live in fear of what happened in 2011 happening to us again. Project leaders will hold a ceremonial groundbreaking on Wednesday, March 28th. In Minot for West Dakota Fox News at 9, I'm Megan Von Barron. A third hour now, new meteorologist Henry Blakes for our first check on weather. Hey, thank you. We're looking at temperatures in the 20s right now. I'll rest your forecast later on. Thank you, Henry. A Bismarck man is headed for life in prison without parole for an attempted murder in 2015. Brandon Lyon was convicted by a jury in October on counts of attempted murder, terrorizing, and illegal possession of a firearm. Today, Judge Bruce Haskell says he believes Lyon is a dangerous person who doesn't deserve any more chances. Your Honor, I came into your court and I knew I was hanging myself by getting up on the stand, but I wanted to just tell my truth. The judge also ordered Lyon to serve an additional 15 years for three other counts. Today, a 29-year-old Ashley Moore was sentenced to 40 years in prison for a 2015 felony incident involving a child. Court records say Moore allowed the child to engage in sexually explicit conduct to be used on the Internet. Police say she also distributed the image of the child on the Internet. On Friday, three people were arrested for harming Bismarck police officers. 
Police say the first incident happened on West Capitol Avenue just before 11 a.m. 29 year old Ashley Crome of Steele kicked an officer in the leg after being detained for being heavily intoxicated. She was arrested for assault on a peace officer. The second incident happened just after 11 a.m. at the Perkins in South Bismarck. Employees say 33 year old David Somerville was intoxicated and refused to leave the restaurant. When police arrived, they say Somerville threatened an officer, then later became agitated and kicked the officer in the chest. Somerville was arrested on assault of a police officer. The last incident we told you about on Friday when an officer was assaulted just hours after paying it forward at a Starbucks in Bismarck. It happened shortly before noon when a man became combative and threw a phone at an officer on the 700 block of South 12th Street. Police say the 37 year old Casey Phelps from Bismarck became aggressive and grabbed the officer's neck, scratched him with his nails. Phelps is also accused of spitting in the officer's face and yelling profanities. He was arrested for assault on a peace officer and contact by bodily fluids. A Watford City Hotel is under investigation after officers found high levels of carbon dioxide in the pool area. Police responded to a 911 call Saturday morning in the Little Missouri Inn and Suites where a child was ill. Police also say an officer's gas sensor picked up high levels of CO2 in the pool area and the hotel was evacuated. Officials vented the pool area and the cause is under investigation. The hotel has yet to comment. In state news, the promise of medical marijuana has long been smoke and mirrors, but starting in April, new regulations take effect. Andrew Horn shows us leaders of the effort hope to get medical marijuana into patients' hands by the end of the year. Welcome back. In his first year in office, President Trump has pursued a pro-lender policy. But what does that mean for the millions of Americans buried under student loans? Fox's Eben Brown looked into it. President Trump has changed a number of laws related to student loans since taking office, including eliminating some debt forgiveness programs and ending tax deductions for student loans. And those policies are making it more difficult for debtors to wipe the slate clean. 40 million Americans carry student loan debt of at least one and a third trillion dollars, but debtors complain unfair collection forces them to default and their debt continually grows. Debbie Baker hoped to have her federal loans partially forgiven for working as a teacher, but was later told she was ineligible and in default. Uh, over $76,000. I only borrowed $34,000 to start with. Thousands tell similar stories. An aerospace engineer who was put in default saw his $30,000 balance balloon to more than 100000 He grew very curious. Now he's the subject of an upcoming documentary. Defaulted loans had become a massive money maker. Government and banks tack on penalties because the law makes discharging the debt nearly impossible. But a new law proposed by Maryland Congressman John Delaney would strike out that one part of the bankruptcy code marking student loans as ineligible for discharge. It's designed to allow people to get a fresh start. That's the whole point of it. Why penalize student debt relative to any other debt? Congressman Delaney's bill has more than 30 co-sponsors. Most are Democrats, but there's one Republican making this an official bipartisan bill. But there's not enough to get a vote on the House floor, and if Congress does nothing by the end of the year, the bill will die. In Miami, Eben Brown, Fox News. For the second time in a week, hundreds of families are on edge after a liquid nitrogen short storage tank failure at a fertility clinic. Fox's Rob Malcolm has more. Hundreds of hopeful parents are on edge after learning thousands of frozen eggs and embryos may have been damaged after the failure of a liquid nitrogen storage tank at San Francisco's Pacific Fertility Center. A spokesperson from the facility says 400 patients have been notified of the failure, which happened on March 4th. My heart breaks for these patients and, and these providers, and I don't necessarily think that anything was done wrong. Or, or inappropriately. The news comes days after an unrelated liquid nitrogen tank failure at a clinic in Cleveland where 2,000 eggs or embryos affecting 600 families were damaged. Officials in Cleveland say the failure was brief and linked to the loss of liquid nitrogen, the same case we're dealing with here. The tanks are incredibly stable, provided that they don't, one, spring a leak, and two, that they're regularly and adequately filled and, 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 and monitored. The only way to find that the samples are viable would be to thaw and have them implanted. 
New video tonight of a fatal courtroom shooting in Utah. You can see a man get up, grab a pen, and rush the witness stand. He attempts to stab the witness before being shot by a security guard. The man's family is now suing, saying lethal force should not have been used. Police in Texas believe a string of deadly package bombings could be related. Two bombs exploded today at homes in Austin. One killed a teenage boy and another critically injured an elderly woman. On March 2nd, a bomb exploded at a home killing another man. The city, which is hosting the South by Southwest Music Festival, is on high alert. The incidences are being investigated as possible hate crimes. Investigators are still trying to piece together what caused a deadly helicopter crash in New York City yesterday. The pilot survived, but five passengers died. Police are now reviewing the Mayday call, which indicated possible engine failure. Another plane crash to tell you about, this time in Nepal. Officials say 49 people died when the jet crashed during a landing in Kathmandu. Black box recordings suggest confusion from the pilot regarding which direction to land. 22 survivors are being treated for their injuries. Time now over for some good news with meteorologist Henry Blakes. Welcome back. The Trump administration's new proposal over school safety is sparking mixed reaction from some Democrats. Fox News correspondent Lauren Blanchard is in Washington with more. The president's newly unveiled school safety plan drawing mixed reaction. Democratic leader Chuck Schumer saying the White House has taken tiny baby steps designed not to upset the NRA when the gun violence epidemic demands giant steps, including universal background checks and banning assault weapons. The plan proposed by the White House Sunday calls for working with states to provide firearm training to some school personnel, establishing a federal commission and conducting a a full audit and review of the FBI tip line. Camps go into their various corners and then we sit and don't get anything done. The president is committed to taking action. The school safety plan coming as the president draws further criticism over other recent announcements, including agreeing to meet with North Korea's leader, as well as his decision to impose tariffs on aluminum and steel. Concerns about a possible trade war leading some Republican senators to move forward with legislation to nix the president's tariffs. Mr. Trump tweeting this morning on the topic that the Secretary of Commerce will be speaking with representatives of the European Union. The president saying tariffs in the U.S. are not fair to farmers and manufacturers. I'm one who believes in free trade but fair trade. I think there's a way that we can have both in this situation. The president also tweeted this morning legislation is still in the works on gun safety, including strengthening background checks and banning bump stocks. As to whether to increase the age limit on gun purchases, the president added the states are making that decision. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. Both Powerball and Mega Millions lotteries can have you winning big this week. Tuesday's Mega Millions is estimated at 318 million, and Wednesday's Powerball is estimated at 424 million. Good luck. Some wild weather from Nashville, Tennessee. Folks woke up to a blanket of snow. The winter weather prompting school closures and delays in the metro area. The storm hitting parts of Tennessee and Kentucky, with eastern counties in Tennessee the most impacted. The snow in the south and a warm up in the West. Over to you, Henry. Yeah, it feels good. The warm up is actually normal. We are getting closer and closer to that 40 degree average mark. But for the time being, we are going to be dealing with some areas of fog tonight. So it's wake up in the morning fog likely in many areas, but our temperature is going to be starting out mostly in the upper single digits and low to mid teens. But hey, before you know it, mid to upper 30s during the afternoon and near 40 degrees across the southwest. We'll have a few disturbances pushing through this weekend to the weekend. Nothing major, just bring us a slight chance of some rain and or snow showers. Otherwise, the weather this week looks to be pretty decent. We're getting lucky weather-wise on St. Patrick's Day. Yes, we are. We'll see you tomorrow.